Before we dive into today's episode, We want to remind you that the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and for educational and entertaining purposes. The Professional Homegirl Podcast is here to celebrate the diverse voices, stories, and experiences of women of color, providing a platform for authentic and empowering conversations. There will be some kiki some tears, but most importantly, A reminder that tough times don't last, but professional homegirls do. Enjoy the show. In BDSM, a little is someone who takes on a childlike or submissive role in a power exchange dynamic called age play. This involves role playing where participants adopt different ages, such as an adult caregiver and a child. The caregiver provides nurturing, guidance, and protection, while the little typically portrays a younger age, often that of a child or teenager, and may engage in behaviors or adopt mannerisms associated with their age. This type of relationship is typically based on trust, consent, and clear communication between all parties involved and involves elements of discipline, playfulness, and exploring innocence and vulnerability. Today, my guest will be sharing her personal journey as a little, and she has her mommy on board with us, y'all. So to my guests, how are y'all doing? How you feeling? Let's go with the daughter first. How you doing? Doing good. I feel really good. Okay. okay. Good. Everything's good. I love my dynamic. I I love being a little. Um, it's, It's really... It's actually really good being a little because you get to. Well, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me ask your mother how she doing first. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> she ready to go. <laughs> so yeah, well. mommy, how you doing? I am doing good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, before you start, daughter, this will help us to um help the audience distinguish who is who with the voices. So this is perfect. Before we begin with your journey as a little. Were you always interested in the BDSM community before you became a little? And if so, what drew you to this lifestyle? Um, I would have to say no before I was into just being spanked. That's what I was into being before until I met my girlfriend. And my girl- girlfriend, I was telling her some things that I liked in relationships I like to do. And she was like, oh, you're a kingster. She's like, you want to be a little, you don't. This, this is like it's okay and I'm like well I've heard these terms before but I've never wanted to be them because I go to a sex therapist and we talk about those things we we open that up but we've never like literally like dwelled into those things talking about like what each category was until like I was like hmm, I like this I think I want to be a little I think I actually want to do this like okay so I've been a little for almost eight Eight years, going on nine years now. Oh, wow. What were some of the things that you like? I am baby five. My age range is from zero to two. So I like that bonding stage, sitting on your lap, having my hair played with. Now, mommy, take notes. Please do take notes. (laughs) Oh, I know. (laughs) I like hugs and kisses. I like drawing and coloring and painting. Damn, I'm a little too, because I like those (laughs) things too. (laughs) you might need need. (laughs) i i love like i'm not into like stuffed animals i'm i'm not into stuffed animals i like pacifiers i like bows i'm 27 years old and i still wear bows like i go Mm -hmm. to work with the bow i show mommy i have my bows i actually go to work with bows and stuff i'm a lilo and stitch fan i like baby dolls and barbies Mm -hmm. so i do still play with baby dolls and barbies um i like to go to the store like I like to go down the like the kids aisle. You like to be carefree, like you like to yes, indulge in yes. things, right? Yes, yes. yes. She, she would eat pizza rolls three times a day if I had let her do that. So yeah, right. Yes. And also, I know you work at a daycare, so does that help you like feel connected to you being a little? Yes, it always has. Yes, it makes me feel. I get to play all day. Like right. I have K through second. For a long time, I did infants and toddlers. And that made me feel more connected to two-year-olds too, because like, I like the bratty side of being a two-year-old, but I also like, like 
the inquisitive side, the loving side of children and how children are like, children are not like us when we get mad at somebody. No, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Kids are like, um, oh, I want to be your friend again. Like they're more loving and nurturing and want to do things and want to go places because I like that side. The whole thing is just hard. After yeah, I adult, yeah, yeah. this is Ad- my reward. <laughs> yeah, adults in this ghetto, child. <laughs> now, what are some other factors that contribute to you being so connected to the little identity? My trauma. I went through a lot in my life with my parents. I was adopted, so my biological mother died on my graduation day from high school. Oh, I've never wow. got to- yeah, I never got to meet her. My me and my biological father, we have somewhat of a relationship, but we don't really have a relationship. So me not knowing who my mom is, like never meeting her or getting that connection with her, mommy gives that connection to have with her and being around other kids give that connection. Like the trauma, the things that I went through also in my childhood is just like being a little like heals that inner child. She's healing something that I've always needed to be healed. Right. Wait, how did you find out if you didn't have no relationship with your your biological mother? Who told you? How did I find out? My father inboxed me on Facebook. And when I called him, he told me drunkenly that my mother had died from AIDS and she's in the hospital. I knew nothing. Wow. Knew nothing for for years. And he came up and told me like over the phone, he's like, and guys, guess what? You know, you're related to me. Your dad's your cousin. So the guy, but my adoptive parents who have been raising me for years, I found out that my dad's not my dad. My dad's my cousin. And he never told me that. Wait, so you so you don't know who your dad is? I know. Who, well, now I know who my dad is because he inboxed me. Oh, got it. Got it. So the person who was raising you, you thought that was your dad, but come to find out that was your cousin. Yeah, my biological cousin. Wow. So, mommy, when you heard when you heard her story, how did this make you feel? Well, my princess had reached out to me um, about five months ago, and uh, I had no idea she had even studied me. She had been looking through my tweets going as far back as two thousand and nine, um, when it came to searching for a mommy dom, and she had told me in the past about her experiences with two two that I know that didn't work out for her, and when she told me about her history which is it's different because this is something that she probably wasn't okay with opening up or she probably didn't know of the aftermath how I would feel about how she opened up and just hearing her story about how how she was adopted things about her biological parents um things about her adoptive parents it didn't run me away for some reason Mm -hmm. I think it was her approach because she was really serious about her intentions of finding a mommy dom and the one that would suit her best. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she did disclose that in the past, it has been rough trying to find that connection that she was looking for. And previously I had sworn off littles. I had never had a little before. However, I had interacted with littles and those littles, they gave me not a wrong impression or a stereotype stereotype but they weren't ready to receive the type of mommy dom that I am so when she reached out to me and told me what her intentions was everything about her including her upbringing including any type of mental um health um issues that she was experiencing what she has done what she has accomplished um it made me feel like this person had their head on straight and that um she was pretty much not using kink in the form of hiding away from her vanilla problems, but only to help her with the vanilla right. problems that she was having. So it made me, it didn't make me apprehensive. It made me like pretty much like welcome her. Cause I'm like, okay, this is someone who is not only a little, but this is someone who is an adult and has their head on straight and they know how to go back and forth between the dynamic um, between vanilla and kink in order to make sure that they are, efficient in both areas and that's something that I was looking for I'm not asking for anybody to be perfect but what I am asking is for someone to go ahead and try and right. that she set her from the littles that I had experienced so. now wait daughter how many moms have you had before you met mommy Woo! we're actually gonna <laughs> like like list um, don't say their names I, yeah don't say I'm their names but give us a number names, but numbers you want numbers 
Yes. Um, off the top of my head, I can say I have talked to twenty off the top. Like I, like literally went through list of like okay today we're going to do five tomorrow we're going to do this five and then like so you was like interviewing I, now yeah yeah pretty much yeah mm. seeing what's best fit for me and then when I found mommy I liked it, her content I liked the way that she talked I liked the way she did things and I literally sat down mm -hmm. and studied her I took like two days and was like um she got 2009 she said, you said thousands of tweets about herself. I want to see her. I right. didn't want to see like what her sessions do. I didn't want to see like anything that she did with anybody. I want to see her mindset and where her Look, mindset is for me. Mommy looking so. proud, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mommy is proud, yeah, baby. To be honest. I sat down and did that. I'm like, okay, like and I and in school, I was never a studier. I was never like something like I want to actually like no. I hated homework, but this was homework for me. I got to figure out who this person is. I want to know their, who they are. Because, you know, we read people text messages and, like, you'd be like, okay. But when you read their tweets or stuff right. they put out for other people to read, other people in the world to see, you sit down and you'd be like, okay, let's see what type of feedback she's giving the world. Like, well, let me see what comes out of her mouth. You want to get a sense of her. Able. Yeah, let me see if right. she's going to be able to lead me and guide me by what she says out of her mouth because... I'm I'm looking up to her and she's looking down to me. So whatever comes out her mouth going downwards is going to spew into me. So, right. so I went into text messages from like 2009. I looked at like where she was and how she came. Like where she was as a person in 2009 into 2023. And like- That's a lot. Like, That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when it comes to I your mental health. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and back in 2009, I wasn't even in the King community then. I was only 20. My Twitter had started out as a vanilla account. And even when I had gotten to Kink in 2012, it was still a vanilla account because I was afraid of how people would react, um, what they would think of me at that time. Right. My account didn't turn dark until about 2020. That's mm. how long. So he's looking at me from a, view, a point of view of someone who is a regular average person through my tweets. And I'm not talking anything about BDSM up until like maybe the tweets are in 2020 around the pandemic. Right. Yep. So it was interesting to know. I'm like, damn, you've been watching me that long? Like, right. <laughs> but in a good in a good way. I mean, that's a good thing, you, especially when it comes yeah. to something as personal as your, your space and your well-being. You want to make sure you have the right people around you that's going to give you exactly what you need. So I right. think that's amazing. I was like, like, I want to know, like, and then when I got into her tweets, so when she got into the lifestyle, then I started to look at, look at sessions and things she did with people, how she talked to them, how she approached them, how is she different than the mom, the mom that I have, the relationship with my mom, and it's totally different, because it's something that I've always wanted, and when I started to look at her tweets, it was like, okay, yeah, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, if I have to tribute I'm going to keep this one in my life. I, I don't care. Let's do it. And she reached out. She was just like, do I have to tribute anything? And I'm like, no. Like, she literally sent me, like, a few paragraphs. And I took the time to, like, literally read it. And I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, this is someone really with their head on their shoulders. Not, hey, I'm looking for a mommy or I need a session. It's just like, no. She introduced herself. She told me about herself and how long she's been in a lifestyle. And she told me what she wanted and what she had to provide for me. And that literally set her apart yeah. from anybody. Mm. because per because it's a switch it's a switch off a lot of people right. don't realize that doms have lives too doms have needs and have wants doms have doms have stuff that they need and as a sub at, for me i just feel like that i have to make sure that if you making sure i'm good i got to make sure you're good they need to be beneficial for both parties correct oh for all correct. parties involved so how do you go about finding um, how did you go about finding her? Like, did you, cause I, did you use hashtags Twitter. or like Twitter? She was on someone's tweet. She made a tweet, like a sub tweet or something of someone. And I was like, I like her thinking, let's see what else she thinks about. <laughs> like, but, I like this. But how did you find the other mom moms, the same Facebook, route or Facebook, Instagram, some of them knew my dad. Dom and my daddy Dom is also a female. They would we had made posts. I had started making posts about it, putting my pictures and stuff out there. And mm -hmm. some of them would like inbox and be like, "Hey, I know you're looking for a mommy Dom. 
And I'm like, okay, what can I offer you and what can you offer me? Like, what I'm going to put all my baggage on the table. And if you can accept my baggage and accept me for who I am, we can go for it. A lot right. of them couldn't. A lot of them wanted money. A lot of these mommy doms, I'm putting it on the record. They want money. Right. They want the cash. They want the money for it. They can care less about your emotional needs, wants, or desires. They want money for it. Right. One of mommy, one of mommy tech, well, one of her um like statements that she put on Twitter is that she doesn't need your money. Correct. So you don't need my money, but I know that. Like, so that that made me feel comfortable that she doesn't need my money. A lot of them that make posts and stuff they tell you they they want your money right so describe your relationship with your mom because i feel like when people hear this conversation or people who are vanilla they're gonna automatically think sexual but i don't get sexual from y'all like i really do get a relationship between two people that is very beneficial and that's helping each other out in different areas of each other's life so describe your relationship with her and your desires and expectations with as far as her with my mom that i live with no wait mommy with me Okay, with me. All right. So, um, the relationship I have with mommy is non-sexual. I'm gonna say mm -hmm. this again. It's non-sexual. Yeah, I don't um, get sexual from y'all. It mm -mm. is a. But have we been asked? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Too many um, times. Plenty of times. We are just a normal everyday, like mother and daughter. Just like you know how we do things. I ask for permission to go places, do things. I don't care what she's doing. I will pick up the phone and be like, hey, can I go here? Can I do this before I walk out? Because I, before I had the mommy dom, I was so used to just eating what I wanted to eat, getting up and going where I wanted to go, acting the way I wanted to act. And it's not like that anymore. Like now I have structure and discipline and like roadblocks before I hit the nail bank. I actually have to like, I have somebody to be like, hey, wait, did you ask me? So you, you, ask her for, you ask her for permission for everything? Yeah, all the way down to spending money because I have a habit of when I'm mad, I'm going shop. I'm going to McDonald's. And she's like, yeah, no, you're not just going to go, no. What, what, what are you talking about? Like, no. Like, I had to be broken out of a lot of things, which is like she said, my eating habits were horrible. I wasn't even pooping when I met her. Oh, wow. I was like, I had to Are you pooping now? Broken. Hell yeah. I'm oh, okay. Because you need to go to, <laughs> go to the doctor. Right. I, I, I end up having to get a colonoscopy. Like, it was that bad with her. Like, oh, with me. Wow. He had to set up, like, no need. Sure, you need either, you need fruits, you need veggies every day. This isn't, oh, I'm planning to get McDonald's. Like, no. Or I'm eating pizza rolls. And she's like, no. Like, no. Like, I have bad times. I have her, like, you know, to get up. But she has got, on to me like she's gotten to know me so well so like she knows my habits or if I'm lying or if I'm like tired <laughs> she knows I'm online like she has all my stuff she knows it's a literally a mother-daughter relationship as if we live in the same house together right the same house same like we act as if like she pretty much she, she had me birthed me wait Our relationship I know that is just that type I know that you've been in this lifestyle for, you said, eight, nine years. How uh -huh. long you and mommy been together? Five months. Five months. Oh, wow. You could have fooled me, child. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving a lot of people say that. We get that. We get that. Yeah. But that also speaks to mommy's character for somebody to feel so comfortable within a short amount of time. Because that's a lot of trust there. It is. It is. And I have trust issues and she make me very well aware or like assure me that I'm not leaving you. I'm not, we're not doing that. Well, I'm, I'm here. I love you. I understand you. She makes me feel comfortable enough to talk to her and, you know, be able to express how I feel. Or if, like I have a load of trash or a load of baggage. She's like, okay, let's talk about it. Like, let's, let's see why you're feeling this way and how you're feeling this way. Not just, you know, a lot of mommy doms that I have interviewed or talked to, oh, well, you didn't pay me this week or, oh, well, you know, I have this to do. Like, no, shoot, mommy will put down, okay, give me like an hour. I'll call you back. Let's talk about it. Right. Or, okay, that's what's wrong. I didn't, even, I didn't even take any sort of monetary tribute or donation for like maybe like a month and a half. Oh, Wow. Yeah, I was doing everything, like, because I knew what she had been through, and I knew the 
her path trying to find an appropriate mommy dom. So it's just like the last thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead and ask her for a monetary contribution. That shit but I did it before that. she asked. Like, before she, she did. Asked, yeah, before she <laughs> yeah. asked, I just started giving. Yeah, because she has a life, just like I have a life. Right. She has a life, and she needs. She has needs and wants that she needs and wants. Now, do I require her to give me stuff? No. Do I ask her? No, because that's not my job. That's not her job. That's my job. My job right. is to have my, have my shit together so that she can have her shit together. If she wants something, I give it to her. Well, daughter, how old are you when you are being a little? Two. Why two? I like that age. They are two-year-olds are... That's terrible too, child. Exactly. If you think <laughs> of a two-year-old, they're terrible. But they have that sweet, innocent type of behavior where it's like, oh, yeah, I know I just pissed my pants, but I love you. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know, like, I, I know I just knocked all this stuff off the table, but don't you love me? <laughs> like, right. But, but it does not work on her. Like, that does, that, I'm telling you, that, that right. don't. <laughs> but I'm just curious. not work on her at all. There's something because I know you mentioned that you had a lot of trauma in your um during your childhood. Did something happen to you at the age of two for you to regress to that age? Yeah, my I was in a foster home. I was in a Jewish foster home, so I didn't get oh, wow. that. I didn't get that time with my parents. I didn't get that love and care that I I needed. I didn't get that. Right. Wow. I was adopted at three. My parents. The parents that I live with now adopted me when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. So from like zero to two, like I didn't, I was in a foster home with plenty of other kids. Right. As soon as she was born. Yeah. So I came out the gate into a foster home. So I like that age. I like being able to just sit down and be a kid for a while and enjoy that time. And right. she allowed me my story. But I also know how to click it on, click it off. Like if we're in front of people or around people or like, you know, we're on the phone and it's like, okay, let's have a serious conversation. I know how to like have a serious conversation and then be like, okay, like, hey, how you doing? Like, you know. Right. Well, wait, is this your voice, your daughter's voice or this is your actual voice? Because I know sometimes people put on, you know. Yeah, I actually talk like a little, like sometimes I actually do. And then, like, but you're hearing my actual adult voice, but yes. Come on, daughter, give us a little voice. Give us a little, give us a little voice. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Don't let me get to acting now. Come on. How <laughs> can I help you out with that? I'm not on this broadcast. <laughs> well, yeah, I yes, shy maybe yes. It's right now, yes, I am very shy. But is this something that's like automatic? Like if mommy asks you to do something, then it's like the voice just come yeah, on. Correct. Yep. Yep. Child, I'm gonna get this voice yep. out of you, mommy. Come on, mommy. I need your help. Oh my <laughs> lord. <laughs> my voice usually comes out when I have to be serious and I'm like, Princess, I'm very disappointed in you. And then oh, the waterworks will come automatically she hates when i'm disappointed it usually does not happen a lot but when it does um she's usually hyperventilating and going crazy at that point but um you can if you if it helps you can go ahead and close your eyes and envision how you greet me every morning um at almost the crack of dawn <laughs> I, it's like i give her like like oh yeah i, do, but I don't call but like good morning, good morning. Like I you give her do. like the sweet high pitch in the morning, and no normally she gives me that good morning. Like I'm a, I'm a lie. <laughs> like uh, tired, I'm mom. Is, don't want to be uh, a girl. Is vibrant, super <laughs> early, and I'm wiping out the crust out of my eyes at this point, and I'm just like, "Hey, baby girl, like <laughs> right." <laughs> I don't know how many times I have called and she's like, how much time I'm putting <laughs> just getting up, okay? Like, I'm, wait, <laughs> babe, babe. Princess, mommy is literally just getting up. Like, I'm like, mommy, what are you doing? She's like, I, I, I literally just woke up. <laughs> like, okay. But she never yells. She never screams. Now, great impersonation of mommy. She never yells. She never raises her voice. 
she will literally be like, I was like, I'll tell her, like, mom, I really just, I really don't feel veggie ish today. She's like, okay, you don't have to. It's okay. It's fine. If you want another colonoscopy, it's fine. Go ahead. We can get another colonoscopy. That's fine by me. Yeah, because you gotta take a shit now. Just like me. Oh my God. Like, no, I don't want that. She's like, well, I guess we're eating vegetables then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she'll be like, she hit me the other day and was like, I want a donut. And I'm like, okay, you can have the donut, but that means you won't be able to have any other sweets for the rest of the week. And she's just like, never mind, never mind. I don't want a donut now. I'm like, what's wrong? No, I I'm, do I'm... that with her. Like, if I feel like I, like, I'm not dumb. Like, if I feel like mommy's going to, like, hook, line, and sinker me, I'm like, um, yeah, no. Mm. She'd be like, yeah, you can have McDonald's. Go right ahead. I'm like, Never mind. Right. <laughs> hey, look, you can have it. Um, I think I'm gonna cook something we got in the house. Uh, I don't even want it at this point. So, do you see the relations relationship between you and mommy evolving over time? And if so, what does that look like? Oh, I see a long, like longevity. Like once we locked in, ain't no switching up. Like I see that with her, and hmm. everybody sees the difference. The change the happiness in me, the like me doing everything that I need to see. Like people see that, even like therapists. Like I see a th- I see a therapist and they're like, she's really, really good with you. Like we wish she would have been in your life the times that you, you know, didn't want to go to therapy, didn't want to get up, didn't want to do what you're supposed to, like case workers, like I they a lot of people see the change. They're seeing the change. That's what's like, up. I'm really happy for you. Yeah. So how do like you define the balance between power and authority within y'all dynamic? We talk. We talk everything out. Everything is literally communication and talking. I always ask her, are you comfortable doing this? Are you okay with this? If you're not, then we can do something different. We can try something different. What do you want me to do? What What are your needs? What are your wants? What are you suggesting that we do? And she lets me know how she feels. And she does the same thing with me. She's like, I sometimes when you know something's on mommy's mind and she's been thinking hard, she's like, I've been thinking. And I'm like, oh, shit, what I do now? <laughs> Did she catch me on Facebook late night? Like, what? I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in trouble. And she's like, no, I'm just thinking that we can try this or we can do this or I can buy you this. Like, I can tell, like, I'm going to have a lot of Lilo and Stitch stuff, a lot of toys. Like, when I come to see her in August, I'm going to have, like, tons of stuff to play with. And, like, I like being collared and I like having, like, you know, her name. Like, I could tell that it's going to be, like, World War One, like, of tons of stuff and lots of love and care. Because she treats me like I'm her real child. Like, I, like she popped me out. And I love that. Listen, so we had a conversation because she has her own episode coming on, coming out, talking about being a professional dominatrix. And one of the questions I asked her, I was like, yeah, so I know you have a daughter and it seems like she's like very supportive. And I was like, how do you balance that with your friends and family? And she was like, well, no, I don't have a daughter. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have a daughter? I'm like, I see her comment and you're underneath your, your comment post saying that she love you, mommy. So that's when she broke it down. And I was like, wow. <laughs> It was yeah, like, yeah, my fuck. Because I'm like, you do have a daughter. I saw her comment. But then I was like, because we all are like, we're in the same age group. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I know black don't crack, but something ain't looking right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 20, I'm, I'm 27. I'm right. very, I'm, yeah. But, yeah, pretty much. Right. So, mommy, how has this relationship been beneficial for you? Oh, my goodness. Uh- uh, princess has definitely been a godsend um I'm not even talking about what she does for me monetary she has taught me a lot about patience mm. and she has pretty much assisted in the boost that I needed to in order to take on the mommy dom position because at first I was just like uh I'm a TT towards littles like I'm an auntie like right. there are littles out to me in an auntie form I've never like felt like motherly but with 
just felt like naturally to care for her. And it made me softer. It definitely made me more feminine. It made me more confident in my role as a mommy dom, especially because I can't think about just me anymore. I have to think about me, another individual. And in her little age, she can't think for herself. In her adult age, she she has autonomy over her thoughts and feelings. And I mean, in her little age, I give her that grace too. But it, uh, she's benefited me just by being someone who is open enough to talk to. I had not had any experience being a mommy dom to a little, so I'm still learning her, and I'm learning how to sharpen my skills and my technique as a mommy dom. Does she want any siblings? No. Do I want any? I was just about to ask you: Can mommy have more than one child, baby? (laughs) She no. She is not going for that. And I don't want another little. I don't think I could find anybody that would be comparable to. She makes me smile. She makes me laugh. She lets me be myself. She lets me take the load off. Like she knows that I work a stressful job, a vanilla job. But she calls and texts me. And even though I'm just like, what do you want? I'm happy to hear from her. It is very, it's, it's a breath of fresh air hearing from her because I know her intentions are pure and you need those types of people. And I don't think these types of connections come around often. Right, right. Um, so I feel like she was like definitely been destined to like be sent to me. And I'm like, I don't know how the heck she found me, but I'm glad that she did. And I'm glad that I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to be open-minded to it because not all littles are the same. And it made me appreciate the fact that I was able to step into something new and actually enjoy it rather than just saying, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. So I can she tell really, you enjoy it. Yeah. She made me like feel really open-minded and it's something that I'm definitely compassionate yeah. about. So Her first thing was after she accepted it, she's like, Oh, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna need this outfit and that outfit. I can yeah, actually I do that. I wanted to transform. I did not want to wear any sort of latex or PVC clothing or lingerie or leather boots or anything. I was just like, I have to be like a mom now. I right. have to cater to this individual and I cannot look like I'm servicing just any old client. I want the Stepford Housewife dress. I want to, and I, I'm really good at putting makeup on. Like I love makeup. Love mm-hmm. getting my hair and nails done. It made yeah, because feel- somebody thinks you're a makeup artist. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Body, I live with some makeup artist. So yeah, I hear that in her episode when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so it, and it I contribute like- to those things. So she she, she wants a hey, look. You want to look like a mommy? I'm gonna pay for it. And like, yeah, you want to get your hair done like a mommy? I'm gonna pay for it. You want to so reach out to the brand and be like, hey, do you need anything? And I'm like, no, I think I've got under control. She's like, well, I'm I get paid this day. You need to write down what you need for me within these days so I can have it and I can remember it. Like she's on top of shit even before I even have to like remind her. Right. And sometimes she'll get it out of me to ask me what I need because I'm just so like, no, I work. Like I'm good. I'm good, baby girl. She's just like, no, but this is what I want to do. So I let her do it. Listen, y'all gonna be having people thinking that their kids must be paying them child, helping them out with bills and stuff. <laughs> y'all gonna be having people making them chat, making their children get a job, child. And <laughs> has been doing her big one with me and in her per- personal life. Uh, tell her, tell her what you just did over the weekend. That was uh really. Oh nice. yeah, see, I have not drove like I've been out of high school for like years now. Right. So, driving was like one of my big like <gasps> I'm actually driving and I'm scared I went to driving school I actually have my driving permit so I'll be switching over to get driving license I paid her car off okay so she doesn't she doesn't have a bill to pay so I paid her, her car off and then the next week after that I went and bought me a car I was like I'm gonna actually do this and drive and be an adult okay come on <laughs> so now. I was getting princess treatment yeah. I was like I'm gonna let my parents take me I'm not driving. And right. Then, like, we, talked, we talked about it and she was like, yeah, it's, it's about that time. I'm driving yeah. and I'm like, all right. I'm just so curious. Now I drive, so. I'm just curious, daughter. Do you want kids? Um, No, not at the moment. If I find a good guy that it's okay with, you know, having kids and understanding that. Or if he has stepkids, I've been in relationships with guys that has kids I don't mind being like a step parent I'm a teacher and Mm. I teach I taught many kids for 10 years I've been Mm. teaching for 10 years so um no I have way too many god kids I've got children Mm -hmm. and um 
the real kids no not not right now not right now i mean you're still young so of course of course but mommy you want kids right uh i'm not sure yet (laughs) i feel like um I'm comfortable and I'll be 34 this year. Mm-hmm. Um, there are still some things that I want to do in my life before I think about bringing a child into this world. Right. And I've always felt like auntie, but now with me having a little, I'm like, oh, okay, so this is like not a full crash course into motherhood because she is an actual adult human being. I said, but this gives me an idea of what it looks like. It's not going to be just about me anymore. Someone right. is going to be dependent for me waking me up before I'm even up and telling me that hey like I need attention so this is teaching me about patience Mm -hmm. um having kids would be cool if I were ready to settle down and do that but right now I'm not ready to now I think I still got some more years (laughs) I mean yeah listen y'all both are young all of us are young so listen we have some time okay yeah now, I know that you have a dad dominant. How is that relationship with your dad dominant? And how is it as a as a family? Um, I want to say it's um it's different because daddy gets to take a break now. And like it's not take a break. Where daddy at? Daddy get daddy's in Ohio. I live in Florida, so I travel between both doms, which I will be doing. But I've seen daddy. Me and I used to live with daddy for like a month. I went to I went to a crash course, crash a crash course, and what a real dom lives like. So I went and lived with her for a month. I went on my job, told my job, look, I won't be here for a month. I'm going to Ohio. I flew out for a month. I lied and told my parents I'm going on some work retreat, and they believed me. You wasn't scared. No, I flew my first time. I got on a plane for the first time by myself. She got me off the flight. Um. Her and her family was so loving and welcome. I am like a stepmom to her. I was when when he was seven. He's thirteen now. Oh, She's wow. been in my life for eight years. So I've been I I take care. I love and care for my also my first um that experience like wild mommy because I tribute to her. I make sure she. I actually pay 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 bills with her, and I make sure things are done. I don't care how many jobs I got to get. I'm going to make sure you're taken care of, point blank, period. Um, that dynamic with me, mommy, and daddy is like a real family. She will not give me my way until, well, let me go ask your mother. What? All right, <laughs> yes. then I don't need it. I don't need it. If you got to ask her for it, it's going to be a different no, I don't need it. But wait, like, when you I'm went like, to go, before you continue, when you went to go stay with her and her family, what did her family say? Oh, did they know her- you? Her family, actually, she taught her kids that she's a dom. My dom sat down and told her kids, look, I'm a dom. This is what I do. She used to put her kids to bed and then go in the neighborhood and dominate on a lady that wanted to be spanked. Oh, so wow. she would put her, she would let her oldest daughter watch her kids and she would go out and do what she needed to do and come back home. She's is she 50. older? Oh, yeah, she's 50. So yeah, I'm, I'm, dating a- a 50. I'm dating a 50 year old. But are you dating? Is is your relationship with your dad? Is that sexual? Yes. Okay. 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 Child, yeah. let me find out about you, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> daughter out there not playing no games, baby. At all. Right. Yeah. So I lived with her for a month. Her kids were, her seven year old. We have not like really discussed it. Discussed it. He knows <laughs> gets spankings. He knows <laughs> gets in trouble. But he does not know. So right. at seven years old, it was kind of like, what is all that noise in there? Like, what is going on? So I had to break it down to him that I'm his mom's special friend. Is she white? She's um mixed. She's black and Native American. Okay. Now you're her, hus- her then husband, but not her husband, but the stepdaddy did not like our relationship he still does not like our relationship i mean but can you blame him though it is what it is i mean you're not getting shit done i might might as well not a real nigga pulling up baby yeah (laughs) i was the side piece for like a year and then i was like listen if i'm paying bills right you You might as well what he here for like like yo so yeah i lived with her for like a month and i was like ooh. 
I'm cool with that. Like, I'm cool with this. I can like this. I can do this. And took care of her, her kids. I showed her. I'm the type of person, I like to show you what you got before you decide you want to go and pick something else. I actually met her on the porn website. Mm. And we and her connected and talked. And I looked through her profile, her stuff. I talked to her. I sat down and got to know her. And then, like, maybe six months later into our relationship, I was like, I'm going to come live with you for a month. I want to see what you're made of, like, what you got. Right. She was like, all right, all right, I got this. So... I fell in love. Like, it was accident. That was an accident. Falling in love with her was a total, total accident. We did mm. not mean for that to happen. She was supposed to be my dom. My my. She was my mommy dom before my daddy dom. Mm. But I see what her daddy dom issues can do in the bedroom and outside the bedroom. And I was like, I don't want you to be my mommy Listen, dom. mommy's <laughs> face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be my daddy dom like I want you to be daddy I want you to dominate me I, you know what you're doing on the daddy side I, I can find a mommy like we can do that later I want a daddy dom so she became my daddy dom and like it's just been that was a freaking accident she was like one day she was like look I think I like you more than you like me and I was like yep I do too and we just like fell in love and we've been in love ever since like now I got two questions and mommy don't feel away. I'm just asking because I'm playing devil's advocate. How do you, daughter, how do you know that these relationships are as genuine as you say they are? Like how talking do you talking communication? Mm -hmm. If I have to sit down and talk to a person over the phone, text message can only go so much. I want right. to hear that person's voice. I want to look at them and I want to, and see their body language like what mommy i automatically went to a facetime because i needed to see her body language yeah because right. energy don't lie exactly and that's how i knew like yep she's the one let's close up facebook block everybody that's like i still get <laughs> Not people like, everybody <laughs> yep i still get people that'd be like oh, are you looking for a mommy dom nope block delete <laughs> like i'll show her i show her everything but like, how do they know you're looking, looking for a mommy dom you on a platform somewhere um, I'm still in like groups that we're in mm. and they was, they probably seen the post I posted that I'm like, okay, I don't care. I'm not taking it down. Right. I have a mommy dom, so it doesn't matter. Like, right. it doesn't matter. Um, and if they do like, you know, I've had one person, oh, you, you said on the post, you were still looking for a mommy dom. Yep. But I have one now, delete block and, um, which whatever. <laughs> right. But now my second question is, you don't think that's too much to be telling the kid about you getting spanked and get his mama a dom and all this other stuff? No, he knows. We bring out the bag. We brought out the bag. Like, he knows. He, he knows what, what his bag? Mama she has a dom bag, too. And I was like, you got a mom bag? She has a dom bag. Yeah. Mommy, how you feel about that? You, you don't think that's too much for a kid to know? Um, In my personal opinion, like, and I want to say that Black parenting, especially Black parenting, is not a monolith. Um, mm -hmm. I probably, like, if I had a child, I probably would have been like, um, you know, that's just mommy's special friend. That's all. Right. Probably when he got a little bit older. But um, he is a smart kid. He, he is did. a very smart kid. He is not the average uh, little child that you would think. Yeah, um, he's 13 now. Yes, and, and he, he knows, makes, knows he knows everything. Like, mm. and he's very understanding. Explaining. He's very understanding and very and open. Says, yep, yep. Mm. He's very <laughs> understanding, very open minded. Now he does not know about the relationship that me and her have, like a sexual relationship. But he knows. Like one day, I got in trouble, and Daddy told me she's like, "Listen, at six o'clock in the morning, you better have my son ready." dress teeth brush and out the door ready for school at you know on the bus at seven i was so scared i had that boy ready at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> hey remember the, you remember the, the episode from um good times when they took the guy from the alley and made him into a green cut man that's how i had that man he's like it's like it's five o'clock in the morning listen i ain't getting no ass whipping for you, you better get up he was so he was so tired. I literally brushed his teeth while he was sleeping. I was like, "Listen, I got to brush your teeth. It's five o'clock in the morning. Ain't get no ass with for you. Get up!" Right. And I had him on the bus out the way. She would dominate me, spank me, and we would have our little time, everything before three o'clock. So when he left, me and her would come down. I would be 
almost like I would cook her breakfast. I would bring mm -hmm. her, you know, drinks, whatever she wanted, serve her like a child would everything. We would do everything that we wanted to do by three o'clock. But if I acted up in front of her kids, she didn't give a damn. She would beat me in front of her kids. She did that one time. And beat she, you like what? She beat the dog shit out of me for disrespecting her in front of her kids because I thought I could in front of her kids. You know what's so interesting about this? Because I feel like, especially with mommy, right? I feel like with mommy and just interacting with her the few times that we have, I feel like the reason why you thrive so much in this lifestyle is because it's giving you something that you never have, which is stability, which is family, which is support. Because yeah. I feel like you really enjoy it, which I can tell you really do. Because I feel like a certain part of you is finally getting the healing that you deserve. Yes, very correct. Yes. Because I can tell you, this this is your shit. This is your bag. <laughs> yeah, I have fun. I actually have fun. I have a lot of fun. Now, are there any hard limits or activities that are off limits for either one of you in this dynamic? Yeah. We're not having sex. Don't peg me. We're not pegging. We're not pegging. <laughs> correct. We're I don't do um like shit. I would never shit in a pull up. Like I wear pull ups because you know it's fun, whatever. Or right. I'm, like kids underwear, I'm not shitting in it. You're not. I, I would. I would like literally like throw well, up. Yeah, that that might be like, a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, if she's like turn around, let me wipe you. Let you do what? No, man. Yeah, I don't <laughs> see <laughs> mommy around. doing it. No. <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about pissing. Um. Mm, no, that is no. mine as well. So yeah, and we know how you feel about shit, mommy. <laughs> yeah, we are both on like off board. We're like nah. Like, um, I have to say, like, I'm not into flogging. Like the typical things that she do with her other clients. Now that I'm learning more about that pro dom side, I'm like, you did what to him? Where? And she's like. Princess, let me explain something to you. She has to literally <laughs> break it down. I'm like, ew. I was like, those are my heart limits. The stuff she does with other clients are my heart limits. Like, I have a whole different book and I have to ask her, you ain't gonna be doing that to me, right? She's like, yeah, no, uh uh, never. And I'm like, good, good. We all yeah, good. I don't get that from y'all, though. Like, I don't get, no. like, I feel like when you speak about your dad compared to mommy, I feel like it's two different type of energies. Yes, it is. Mom is more of the disciplinarian. Daddy will actually, instead of daddy being daddy, we've given daddy the backseat because daddy has did it for eight years. Like she's been holding it together for eight years. And now that mommy's here, mommy is more of the like disciplinarian and the one that'd be like, no, daddy, she cannot have ice cream at three o'clock in the morning. Like she's the one that'd be like, no, like, like, are you serious right now? Like, right. Like, she will take, hey, mommy, can I have like a cinnamon roll? And I'm like, you can have one or two. She was just like, but it has eight in a pack. I'm like, that doesn't mean you need to eat eight. And then I will have her take a picture or we'll get on <laughs> FaceTime and she will cook it and then put the rest away. And I'm like, hey, what about them cinnamon rolls the other day? Do you still have the same amount that I told you to have? Like, I'm very much on her when it comes to that and then my brother turns around and <laughs> eats them and i'm like bro i needed that for proof and evidence and he's like bro i'm sorry i was hungry and I'm like bro like really like my parents are not supportive of my lifestyle well hold on before brother... you get there could we i, I want to ask you some questions about that but mommy do you like daddy i do I do. It's a little bit hard um, because we um, live in different states. Like she's in Ohio and I am in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, so when we do family time, we'll get on either like Facebook Messenger, like do a video call with all of us together or we'll FaceTime each other. Um, we've actually disciplined um, Princess that way uh, before and had her stand in the corner for about an hour. But um, I do like daddy. Um, I do like the fact that she is able to take a back seat in this. Um, especially since she has been doing this uh, for so long. Right. We definitely have different styles of parenting and personalities and stuff too. Um, but I do love daddy and I do cherish her, especially as an authoritative figure, uh, figure for her. And she's actually a really good person to speak with, um, especially regarding BDSM and the dynamic. Like she's very um, heavy on high protocol and discipline. So Listen, it's I feel cool. like y'all the gift that keeps on giving. Don't <laughs> no. set that up for me, mommy and daughter. 
Yeah, now, it was cool. I feel like when people hear this conversation or when you have these discussions about the lifestyle that y'all live, I'm pretty sure that you encounter a lot of uh, misconceptions or stereotypes about being a little within or outside of your community. And if so, how do you address them? That's my mom. And people are like, you know, it's kind of like pedophilish. No, that's my mom. We ain't doing nothing sexual. That's like, we, I've had to tell people off. Like, that's my mom. Like, no, there's nothing in between the lines. Don't you have a mom? They'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I got one too. That's my mom. Like, right. Like and then on the side, ask, people like, so your little really like gives you money, like, and like pays for your hair and nails and pays your car off. Like, I want someone that's like that. I'm like, no, because submission is earned. And unless you have done something or contribute to this person's well being, and I'm not talking about just because you want to receive something out of it, I'm talking about you are pretty much responsible for a whole nother person um, and their mental, physical, and emotional well being. Then you don't get the privilege in order to be a mother dom to anyone. Um, and anybody in this lifestyle, especially littles and subs, they've been in this lifestyle pretty much longer than you. So they will pretty right. much know when you are in this for the money or if it's some sort of ulterior motive that you have. Like these people require more care than anyone else in my opinion because of oh, yeah, for the sure. age play that they have um yeah. there's littles there's middles like there's teenagers like and they have different needs so the needs of one little is definitely going to differ between the other one and depending no on what child type of is the same exactly and what the, the, depending on what type of background that they actually have you're gonna have to care cater that experience so that it's um a dynamic between you two and it's not universal it has to really be something that is uh dedicated uh to that specific person and that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience which a lot of people don't have a lot of people are naturally caregivers right and when people hear our stories and stuff they automatically try to i've been tried i've been almost kidnapped twice kidnapped by who by people mm -hmm. they want me as their sub or they want me as their submissive they want me as their little they will, will underhandedly try to have you know a conversation with me or her and be like oh does your little does this or like you know trying to be sneaky and ask questions that they know knowingly they're not asking for good intentions they're asking for like bad intentions to try and get me from you know they'll re they'll reach out to her. Oh, can you teach me to be a mommy dom? And she'll like, no, but you can talk to my mommy dom about you know her domination one on one. They'll do that in the wow. attempts to try to get the experience of doming this person, and then just be like, hey, well, since I've been doing this for so long with you, might as well go ahead and make it official. And it's just like my little already knows where home is. I'm not worried about her switching up or right. you know being influenced by anyone else. But people out here will try it. They right. definitely have. Now, mommy, we know that people think that you're a makeup artist. So, daughter, do any of your close friends or family know about you being a little? And if so, what are their thoughts on your identity? Yep. Um, I've had the job done now. My my family does know. My parents do know. Um, and they're they're not my family is okay with it, but they don't like it. They think it's kind of pedophilish. How did they find out? Um, they don't really like it. Um, I had to break it down and tell my mom. Like, she's like, "Why are you taking all these trips? And why do you have all this? Like, why? Why?" And I, I just told her, "Like, mom, I'm a little. I like to be spanked. I like to be. I like to be handled like a child. I like that bonding, that one on one time that you can't give me. So somebody else is giving it to me. I told her straight like that, and um, she wasn't okay with it, but she accepts it because she feels like." maybe that's healing my trauma in some type of way so she's understanding now but she's not she doesn't like it but she understands it but my job a lady on my job had said something to me along the lines of can you come and do this with me I was like no nah, I'm a dom I can't do that what she wanted you to do um like hanging out with people I ask for permission before I do certain things and my boss looked at me and was like, you have a wet, I said, I have a dom, I have a disciplinarian, I have to ask my mommy before I'm allowed to like come and hang out and do things with other people because Girl, I just started I know they driving. was probably looking at you like, <laughs> no, actually my boss was very interested. 
she was like, what? What else do they do? Like, right. What? And they don't judge me. My job is we do we don't talk around the kids. We don't ever talk around Obviously. the kids. But we do and privately, they'd be like, Oh my gosh, like this is like cool. Like you got somebody to hold you accountable. My job loves it. Like they'll even like say hi to mommy. Like if I'm on Clubhouse with her or whatever, and I'll be like, Oh, Malik's in the room and Malik could be like, Hi, like the guys, they understand it. They are very okay with it. They know I have a mommy done. They know they they've heard her voice before and said hi to her. They they're okay. So how do you navigate the transition in and out of the little headspace? Like, is that hard for you sometimes? No, it's, um, I'm sorry. It's coming in. No, it's fine. Um, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you're a little when you need to be a little, and then you're an adult when you need to be an adult. Mm -hmm. So when I need to be a adult, I'll talk as an adult, do what I got to do so that I can quickly become a little and enjoy my time. Right. And is it hard for you to balance everything between your career, your life, everything you have going on in your personal life and also in your lifestyle? No, because I've been doing it for eight years. At first it was like the first year it was like, damn, this is hard. Right. What am I doing? Like, but once you find purpose in what you're doing and you start to love what you're doing, it's like, oh, I can do this. I've been doing it for eight, eight, nine years with my daddy. So I knew with mommy, it's going to be easy. Like, right. this, is, this is cool. Okay. Like. Now, in what ways have being a little provided comfort or help you cope with the emotional challenges associated with losing your mom? Um, That I have a mom. Like, I feel like God purposely, like, brought her to me to be a mom to me that I needed mm -hmm. so she gives me the comfort and reassurance that everything's okay and I'm a dramatic child and every time I talk to her she's like it's like <laughs> you can tell she's like smacking her forehead like no it's not that serious you're fine you're not dying but you're fine you're going to be okay I'm like no what if this? she's like you're fine you're going to be okay and she gives me that reassurance that real mothers do that but when I got can't do that right. she can't like navigate with my feelings this one does this one gives me like the feelings the the love and the understanding that I need I feel so, like the mom that you have y'all not really close are y'all no we're not yeah I can tell <laughs> I don't get that like uh -uh, we're not um we are on some level but other levels like this no right she doesn't really have feelings and connections the intimacy. That yeah but mommy does she gives me all, all that and more so i'm like yeah right like yeah now if your mom was still alive would you would would you be open to having that conversation or have a, some type of relationship with her oh yeah yeah and i would tell her about mommy I yeah i've heard my mom mom biological mom is a really nice person so i'm pretty sure she'll be understanding of what I like right and what is your relationship yeah. with your dad now your biological my, dad my dad lives in Tampa and he's a listed pedophile so I have no conversations like oh wow we have and he has schizophrenia really bad so it's hard to talk to somebody that doesn't know fiction from reality and right. those type of people you just have to be careful about what you say and how you say it um I do you don't know what can trigger them Yes, I do speak to him once a month and I check on him to see how he's doing. But otherwise than that, there's really no relationship. Like, no. You know, I don't really know you that well, but I want to say I'm really proud of you because you, you've been through some shit. And, you know, to see where you at now, you look very happy. Like, I can tell that this yeah. is a, a healthy relationship with you and mommy. Like, because I know in life, it's not, it's not easy trying to navigate through all this shit that life throws at us. So, I'm really happy for you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And what is your advice you would give to others who have experienced similar losses in art or are exploring being a little as a form of healing or coping mechanism? Do it. Go ahead and do it. It's like the best thing ever. Like I wake up happy. I go to bed happy. Once you find the person that has that niche that, that gives you like, you know, that clicks with you. It's like the best thing ever. Like, mm -hmm. 
it's once you find that person, once you find your person, and you and your person clicks, is it's fun. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I love it. And mommy, you have any advice for those who may be in a similar situation as your daughter? Um, for anyone who is thinking about being a little, I would say go ahead and embrace it. Mm -hmm. If you are searching for a parental figure or a big, or in this case, like a mommy dom, definitely study them the way that studied me. Look at their social media profiles. Look at what they are saying in their most intricate thoughts when they're not in scene. Um, ask good questions like why is submission paramount why is consent paramount within this dynamic what does submission mean to you um what do you have to offer as a mommy dom to a submissive these types of questions go way further than how long have you been in the bdsm lifestyle because not everybody can be a why are you looking like that i'm looking at my phone I'm okay. sorry <laughs> not everybody's like texting me at the wrong time but go ahead. I I had to put my phone on D and D, but not everybody who's in this lifestyle can be a caregiver. Like when mm -hmm. they, when people say, "Oh, I'm a dom," that's a very important know, job. What type of D type are you? Are you a sadist? Are you a mommy dom? Are you affectionate? Like, what are are you a high protocol dom? Like, th there are different types, and sometimes those can go ahead and intertwine in order to see what type of dynamic that you would be able to present or represent yourself. But it's important to know who you are. And as subs, especially since they're on searches for a parental figure, you really have to really vet and make sure that the person that you're interested in is right for you and suit your needs too, because your needs are definitely important. So. Well, I thought this was a very insightful and amazing conversation. Me too. I, right? Thank you. I am like so. Proud. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What'd you say? As I'm very proud of her. This is her first time like speaking on a podcast. Yes. Thank you so much, daughter. Oh, you, you know, welcome. I do have one more question for you. So, what do you get mommy for Mother's Day? Oh, man. Um. Well, she could get a massage or I asked her, did she want flowers for Mother's Day? I was going to do an edible arrangement and send it to her house. But since, you know, grandma don't know much. I didn't want her to open the gift and eat it. So I was like, yeah, I have it. <laughs> yeah. You she's going to be grandma. like, mommy, and start eating it. And then she's like, oh, I well, thank you for the edible arrangement. And then you're going to be sitting there thinking, <laughs> <laughs> you ate my edible arrangement. And I want you to be mad with your mama, low key. You'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm. remember that Mother's Day ate my edible arrangement. Like, I don't want you to be mad with her. So I had to figure that out. But she's definitely getting a Mother's Day gift from me. But mommy, you know you're gonna have to tell your mama about something real soon. Um, probably once I am out of the house and well, yeah, that makes uh, sense. <laughs> the city as much as I can. yeah, yeah, I, I will, and I know she's probably gonna go ahead and run her mouth to cousins or aunts, and they're gonna be like, "Well, we already knew you were just the only person who did." Right, like girl, catch up. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, but I know eventually I have to have this conversation and I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm just preparing for the worst. She's not mm -hmm. going to do it like that. She's just going to think I'm a weirdo. And I don't right. think anything in the is weird because I'm in it. But this is coming from somebody who is like in their 60s, who goes to church and right. uh, who is going to look at this as the eyeball in like, what are you doing? And this is a bit much. So I'm, I'm not right. going to stop going. <laughs> well mommy and daughter i appreciate y'all i think that the listeners definitely learned a lot during this conversation so to the listeners if you have any questions comments or concerns if you want to email me please make sure to do that at hello at the phdpodcast.com and until next time everyone later bye, bye. daughter you're not gonna say bye I bye <laughs> <laughs>